This video talks about main logical operators, negation, disjunction, and conjunction. And what we're going to do is basically introdu introduce some of the um, straightforward rudimentary features of sentential logic. Um, we'll make some comments about some of the prominent operators. Um, we'll have a lot more to say about this as we go on. So to begin with, let's talk about negation. Um, and what we're going to do is we'll take a look at um, how negation works. So very straightforwardly, negation is going to be, you know, represented in the text by a little symbol like this. For some reason, it didn't come out quite right here. Um, and this is going to represent it's not the case that or just plain old not. We call this negation. Um, at some points, we're going to also introduce a convention for numbering the lines in an argument. So we're going to say, we're going to introduce a number one, and here you'll see the negation of P. P here stands for declarative sentence. And so this is going to say something like, line one reads, it's not the case that P. So it's pretty straightforward. We'll, we'll get more into this as we go on. But it's important to recognize some features of the semantics of negation. Um, negation, to begin with, of course, is more interesting than you might initially imagine. So when you think about it, it's clear that, for example, if you negate the sentence, it sometimes rains in El Paso, the negation of that sentence isn't. It sometimes doesn't rain in El Paso those two sentences are entirely compatible, right? So it's compatible with the truth of it sometimes rains in El Paso, that it sometimes doesn't rain in El Paso. And since those two are perfectly consistent, it doesn't capture you know, what we want to do when we say, OK, I'm going to negate this sentence. So the negation of this one here would be you know, the denial that this is true. So the proper negation of it sometimes rains in El Paso is it never rains in El Paso. Okay, so this is going to be a sort of a preview of how generality and, and um, claims about, you know, always, sometimes, every, some, etc. work in logic, which we'll talk more about later. But for now, we just want to sort of note that the semantics of negation are, are something we should think about carefully. They're kind of subtle. So let's look at another case. Um, so if you have, for example, if you want to negate Bill and Hillary were from Arkansas, the negation of that sentence is, or the negation of that declarative sentence is, either Bill, Hillary, or both were not from Arkansas. So let's think about that a little bit. So we've got um, a compound sentence. The compound sentence is Bill was from Arkansas and Hillary was from Arkansas. So Bill was from Arkansas and Hillary were from Arkansas. If you wanted to negate that, then you're negating a, what we'll call a conjunction. A conjunction is when two declarative sentences are joined by an and. The negation of a conjunction is pretty complicated. Either Bill, Hillary, or both were not from Arkansas. Let's try and explain that a little more straightforwardly. So why is that? OK, so let's take Hillary and Bill were from Arkansas. Compound sentence, it's a conjunction. It's composed of two declarative sentences. Hillary was from Arkansas, and Bill was from Arkansas. Straightforward enough. So we'll let P be Bill was from Arkansas. So P is a variable standing for this sentence, this declarative sentence. Let Q be Hillary was from Arkansas. So P and Q, the dot is an and here, P and Q is true only when both P and Q are true. So when P is true and when Q is true. It's false in all the other cases. So to deny P and Q is to say that one of the other cases obtain. 
And there are three other cases. And what are those? Well, there's the case where Bill wasn't from Arkansas, or where Hillary wasn't from Arkansas, or where they both weren't from Arkansas. The case where either Bill, Hillary, or both were not from Arkansas. So now what we've seen is we're beginning to get a feel, I hope, for the combinatorial possibilities, how you know you can combine the truth values of declarative sentences and what the possible patterns of combination are. So if you have a compound sentence like Hillary and Bill were from Arkansas, then you have the case, let's say the first case is where it's true that Hillary's from Arkansas and it's true that Bill was from Arkansas. Uh, the second case would be one where Hillary is from Arkansas but Bill isn't from Arkansas. The third case would be one where Hillary isn't from Arkansas, Bill is from Arkansas. The fourth case would be one where neither Hillary nor Bill were from Arkansas. And there are no, in fact, other combinations of truth values. So that's a striking fact. We can enumerate all of the combinatorial possibilities here pretty straightforwardly. Okay, so we talked about negation. Let's talk about disjunction or the or operator. Um, here we're going to use a wedge. Um, the wedge is sort of harkens back to the Latin word vel. Vel is the Latin word for or, but it's a special kind of or. It's the inclusive or. So we'll t make a distinction between this kind of or and another kind of or in a moment, both of which we can represent logically or formally. So P, here we got uh, say P wedge Q is going to be read as P or Q. So the statement P or Q, as we'll see, is true if either P is true or Q is true, or both are true. So it's only false in case both P and Q are false. So again, notice that there are only four possible combinations of truth values. So just to go through them, let's say it was this time Bill was from Arkansas or Hillary was from Arkansas. So if we enumerate those, Bill was from Arkansas or Hillary was from Arkansas, what are the four possibilities? Well, the first is that it's true that Bill is from Arkansas. It's true that Hillary was from Arkansas. The second would be it's true that Bill is from Arkansas, and it's false that Hillary was from Arkansas. The third would be it's false that Bill was from Arkansas, and it's true that Hillary was from Arkansas. And then finally, the fourth case would be the one where Bill, it's false that Bill is from Arkansas, and it's false that Hillary was from Arkansas. So those are the four possibilities. So if you, as we'll see, we can sort of organize these and write them down, and we have a little table we call the table of possible combinations, we call that the truth table. In this case, with binary um, operators like this joining two variables, two, sent two declarative sentence variables, then what we're going to have are four possible combinations of truth value. We'll say more about that in the next video. So that's, the, that's what inclusive OR looks like. Exclusive OR is slightly different. Well, it's different in an important way. So exclusive OR um, is the other sense of disjunction. So this is the kind of um, case that says, you know, uh, I can have another drink or I can drive home without breaking the law. And the intention here is to say, but I can't do both. Or you can go to class at 3, or you can go swimming at 3, but you can't do both. Of course, unless it's a swimming class, but assuming it's not a swimming class, you can't do both. And the symbol we use for this is this guy. It's a sort of a circle. It's hard to do with this computer with an X through it. Exclusive or, or XOR. Oh, that's pretty awful. Sorry about that. So P, X, or Q uh, runs as follows. Again, we've got, remember now, we've, we're starting to list these, these uh, values. One, two, three, and four. Or 
these combinations rather of values. So we've got the case where P is true and Q is true, P is true and Q is false, P is false and Q is true, and P is false and Q is false. So exclusive or is you can't have both, right? But you can either do one or the other, but you can't have both. So let's look at this. So in the first case, in the first line, sorry, the first, where are we here? So the first guy here says, okay, it's true that P, it's true that Q, if that's the case, you have both, right? You have true that P and you have true that Q. So this would be, I went to class or I go to class at three, I go to swimming at three. And for exclusive or, you can't have both, right? So you have either one swimming, go to class, but you can't have both and you have to have one of the two. So this can't be true. So here we see it's false and false. These are the two cases where it's false, the exclusive or, the other two cases are true. It's a little tricky. If this if this is difficult, we're going to spend some time introducing the truth tables properly in more detail, but I thought I'd throw it in anyway. So that's exclusive or. So there are two senses of or, the inclusive and the exclusive sense. So we can express the ought, ought is the Latin word for the disjunctive or, the exclusive or. We can express that using the regular inclusive or and and negation. So how do we do that? Well, what we're, what we're writing here is equivalent to saying P, whoops, XOR, this is kind of hard to do with this thingy, Q. Yeah. So this is equivalent to, and we'll, I'll even give you the symbol for equivalence. If and only if, this is called. So this, if and only if, P, X, or Q. So let's read the stuff on um, on the left-hand side. So what do we got here? Whoops. We got here. So let's read this. What this all says is P or Q and not both P and Q. So let's show the connections here. So here's the P or Q part. That would be this section here. So P or Q. Here's the and and Here's the not. And then finally, P and Q. Right here. Ugh, sorry about that. Okay, so the sentence reads exactly the same as the intended meaning of the exclusive or. So what we're saying here is P or Q and not both P and Q. You can either go to class or you can go swimming and you can't both go to class and go swimming. So now we're beginning to see something about how the parentheses work here. So if we were to um, take a look at my mess here, P or Q and not P and Q, the parentheses are going to mark what it is that um, what the, the how the parts relate to each other, what the form of the of the sentence as a whole is. Well, again, we'll say more about this. I'm kind of rushing ahead a little bit into some of these topics, but I think you'll be able to keep up. So, 
being more explicit about it, the red dot here is the main logical operator. It's sort of like the thing holding the two parts, the two major components of the sentence together in this compound sentence. So the MLO is very important when you start having statements that are going to have combinations of conjunction, disjunction, and negation. Okay. So and here, as we've seen, it divides the sentence. So if we if we take a look at this sentence um, and we see the and is right in the middle, right circled, right in the middle of the sentence as a whole, we're going to be able to conclude P or Q and not the case that L, that should be a dot instead of a upside down wedge here and M okay anyhow so let me just correct this this guy here should be a dot it's from a previous version of the course in many logic texts you'll see a kind of an ups upside down wedge standing for the dis the conjunction and uh, we're going to use the dot instead. Okay. So as we as we know, any proposition, any declarative sentence P is either going to be true or it's going to be false. And so there are two possible truth values for P. But what about a sentence then like a uh, compound sentence like uh, P and Q? So how many ways are there for this sentence to be true or false? So at this point, you should be able to see that there are four, you should begin to see that there are four possible ways of being true or false. So the first case, so if P is true and Q is true. The second case, if P is true and Q is false. Third case, P false, Q true. And fourth case, P false, Q false. And then what you're going to see is that for each of those cases, something like P and Q will be true or false. So turns out that the only way that P and Q can be true, that compound can be true, is if P is true and Q is true. In all other cases it's false. And what we have this way of listing all possible combinations of truth and falsity in a statement. So underneath the sentence letters right here, we've listed the possible combinations of truth values. And then under the um, operator joining the two of them, so here's the AND operator joining the two of them, we've listed what that operator gives in each of these possible combinations. So when P is true and Q is true, then we say that the sentence as a whole, P and Q is true. In all, of the case, in all of the cases, it's false. So if Q is true and P is false, then the sentence as a whole, P and Q, is false. We'll say more about this soon. OK, the truth table for OR, for the disjunction, is set up so that the only way that this can be false sentence as a whole can be false, is if both parts of the disjunction, both disjuncts, we say, are false. This is the only case where the disjunction as a whole is false. Okay, so we're going to think more about the syntax for logic, the role of well-formed, uh, well, how we're going to build well-formed formulas, and that's described in detail in the text. Um, and uh, I'll leave it at that for now. This video is running a little long, so.